Welcome back. 2021, off to a great start. It's the 5th or 6th of January today. It's snowing. We're in lockdown three in the UK and uh, my car's in the garage already this year. But anyway, the cows still need PD'd. Still need to get out there and support the clients, do the work. It could be a lot worse. Let's do it. Like I said, we're back PDing or preg checking if you're from North America. That's one for all the Cody Creelman fans. The cows get some routine treatments at the same time. On both farms, those are a flucicide and a BVD vaccine. On the second farm, they get a mineral bolus on top of that. Now, some of you are probably wondering, is this YouTube channel just a social experiment to see how long I can get you to watch footage of me rectaling cows and from how many angles. Not quite, although it does seem to go down quite well. I suspect that's a reflection of everyone having finished Netflix and Amazon Prime. It does, however, reflect a big aspect of what I like about being a farm vet, and that's a seasonality. So the job is pretty different between the summer and the spring and the autumn and the winter. And the autumn going into the winter, as it has been, is a busy time for cow work and that's why I've been going around in all these farms you know the other vets in the practice have been doing exactly the same thing and we've been doing you know two or three four maybe key jobs been very quiet on the sheep front by comparison and it's great I think because you get to focus on a few things and you can really work on it and then at the end of those you know the busy period for that job you can then consider what you could have done differently how we're going to improve it for next year and you get a chance to sort of reflect Whereas if you're doing the same thing all the time, you don't necessarily get that and you get possibly a bit jaded, a bit bored with what you're doing. She should just become a three year old, I think, so. Oh, she's the first car. Or second car? Second car. She's in car. Yeah. The condition on them often, uh, yeah. they're often they're poor by this stage. They're almost the hardest. They're harder than the heifers. Threw away with information you don't need them to try and collect it. <laughs> second time round. <laughs> right. She's in car. <laughs> Talking about routine treatments, here we are and you can see John is just about to give the BVD vaccine, BVD bovine viral diarrhea. I'll stick my head above the parapet again and say there's no breeding cow in the UK, a breeding bull for that matter, that shouldn't be getting a BVD vaccine. And so once he's given that, he is going to give a flucicide, that's a product that kills liver fluke and plenty of you farmers will recognise that sticky orange thick stuff he's injecting there, just goes under the skin stain your hands like fake tan. One thing I know I need to get better at is filming outros because I get my footage and I totally forget I should round it off in a nice neat way. What you didn't see, we got to the end of the session, really good result again. Uh, I think it's just two cows or two heifers empty 96% in calf, which is where you want to be. So, happy farmer, got all the bloods done for yonis. There's three bought in cows we were testing for BVD as well. Which farmer got them fluked and he got them BVD vaccinated at the same time. Otherwise, my truck's been given the all clear for now. So, I'm walking up the industrial estate. So, the vet practice is at the back, the garage is at the front, nice and convenient especially if you drive like I do. In terms of the weather, very much behaved itself. So it's still fairly chilly, but 
wasn't raining. This is always better than rain. I'll take anything over rain and mud. Anything. Thanks so much to everyone who has subscribed already, commented on videos, liked videos, gone on, had a look on the social media. It's really, really encouraging. So uh, thanks for your support at these really early stages. It's just been really encouraging and it's encouraging me to carry on doing it, putting out a few more videos and uh, yeah, let's see where it takes us. Thanks. We're back at it again tomorrow. More PDing. Uh, I don't think we're bleeding them for yonis, but we are uh, fluking them. And we're also giving these cows a mineral bolus. Anyway, see you tomorrow. And we're back, another day, still cold, but still dry. More calves to BD. They're a little while away, they're out on the Otterburn Ranges, so we'll go and get them. If there's one thing I've learned in my first few years in practice, it's, it's that beef farmers generally try to not put their cattle through the crush if they can avoid it, which makes sense. The more you put them through, the more time and effort and expense and the more stress for the cows. So if we can combine jobs, that works out best for everyone, farmer, vet and cow. The sort of jobs you might combine, you've seen me in a couple of videos, yonis testing, mineral bolusing, all sorts, vaccinating. There is one difficulty if you're the vet and you're expected to do a couple of other jobs, including PDing, is that inevitably at the business end of the cow, at least one half of you tends to become quite mucky quite quickly. And then when you're trying to do other jobs, you end up getting everything else, your kit, your blood tubes, etc., very dirty. It took me about six months of going on farm, doing these jobs, coming back covered in head to toe in cow <laughs> coming back with a tray full of blood tubes covered in cow <laughs> then wiping each one, re-sticking the labels on, sending them to the lab before I realised there might be a better way to do it. This is how I do it. I'm not saying it's the only way or the best way, it's just the way I've come to do it. And see, it works well for me. In order to show you, I'm going to try something. I'm still very new to vlogging, but I'm going to try it. Now, I'm going to close my eyes and try very hard to get this right the first time. Look at that. Straightforward. This is what I would normally wear if I'm PDing. Both arms gloved up. Collar top, long glove, hand glove. And as I say, if you're PDing with one arm and then you're coming out and using that arm to help collect blood or whatever you're doing, this arm is gonna get everything else very mucky very quickly. What I do to stop that happening is simply this. If I'm doing two jobs, I'll do the clean job first and the dirty job after. PDing is normally the dirtiest job. So all I do is get a second glove over, you say blood sampling, get your sample, pop that down, that's nice and clean. Then you PD with your PDing arm, and then you take your dirty glove off, throw that behind your shoulder, and that's it. Start again, these gloves stay nice and clean. There are a couple of downsides to it. Uh, you have to use a lot of lube compared to if you were just using your same you know, same glove all the time because that stays nice and damp, nice and lubricated. Every time you put a new glove on, it's dry, and so you have to re-lubricate. The other one is you use a lot of gloves. There's no two ways about it. For now, I think on balance, despite using more lube, more gloves, this is probably still the best way for me because otherwise you spend hours and hours cleaning blood tubes off at the end of the day. You do use a lot of plastic gloves which will of course go to landfill. Nobody tell Attenborough. Sorry, David. That's, that's how I do it. I'd be really interested to know if anyone's got any other ways of doing it where you stay reasonably clean and you can get on and it's quick. So Jake the farmer here actually has a new mobile crush. You can see it there. So it's towed uh, using that little tow bar. We're just gonna position it. So I'm in charge of making sure it goes where it needs to go. 
What could go wrong? Good, uh, s s uh, slow down, stop! This will Glendale Engineering there, will that? So that's the crush set up, sort of lower down. And we'll get these gates in. It'd be easier for us using two hands. <laughs> so that's us set up. We've got a little station on the back of the pickup, the tailgate. We've got Mineral bonuses in there, keeping warm. We've got a uh, BVD vaccine, and then on the side of the crush, we have our flucicide. So, Jake's just gonna fetch the cattle, and we'll be laughing. Exactly. I mean, no, good on Strictly Come Dancing. I think it'll be more of a, uh, I'm a celebrity. Yeah, she's in car. She's got one of those in her teeth, I think. Mm. But she spits it out. Yep. Got one. There's nothing more annoying. <laughs> I'm gonna get you. I'm gonna get you. Well, can we go back to um, Black Hawk and buy another pool? As I was done and on the way home, uh, I didn't come my normal way today because of all the snow. It's a bit later, it's a little bit warmer, so I'm going to try the slightly more remote but slightly quicker route and we'll see how we get on. Fingers crossed. close my eyes and try very hard to get this right the first time.
Come on. Oh, for fuck. Right.